This is Karen. Welcome, everybody. This is Shane. Today, we're looking at part one of Park Guell. A place full of wonders. <gasps> and the vocabulary words are luxury. Luxury. The luxury car was ranked the best automobile of 2020. Pollute. Pollute. The smoke from the factory polluted the air and turned the sky black. <gasps> oh, no. Disappointment. Disappointment. To Reggie's disappointment, he didn't make the soccer team. Mm -hmm. Remain. Remain. This year, snow remained on the ground until May. Mm. Not in Taiwan. <laughs> <laughs> Opportunity. Opportunity. Working for the company is a great opportunity to learn new skills. So, we're talking about Park Guell. I think you probably will be familiar with it. Of course. I lived in Barcelona for one year, mm -hmm. and I went to Park Guell quite often. Really? Yes, because although Barcelona is not too big of a city, mm -hmm. you don't feel too crowded there, but it's still nice to get away a little bit. And this park is kind of really in the middle of the city. Okay. And it's up high, there's nice views, and it's just a beautiful garden, park. It's just a really nice place to relax. I saw pictures of Park Well, and it looks like just like you're in a little fairy tale. Exactly. All the architecture and everything in there, it just looks so cute. Right. And originally, it was going to be built for some really rich guy who wanted a community for rich people mm -hmm. and they would just stay there and I guess get away from the factories and the poor people. Yeah. But maybe the project was just too big and they decided to cut it off. It was actually a commercial failure. Yeah. And so eventually the government bought it and just mm -hmm. made it into a public park and thank God they did because mm -hmm. I think now it's, you know, one of the most attractive uh, places or destinations in Barcelona and it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. That's right. I would love to pay a visit one day. You absolutely have to. Barcelona is wonderful. Okay. Well, let's learn more about Park Well. Enjoy. Park Well, a place full of wonders. In 1900, the great architect Antony Gaudí was hired to build a luxury community on top of a tree-covered hill in Barcelona, Spain. The man who hired him, Count Osebi Guell, wanted Gaudí to create a place where the city's rich people could live surrounded by beautiful gardens, well away from the city's polluting factories. Hello and welcome to Live Interactive English. I'm Mike. I'm Kim. I'm Miguel. I am still Kim. You're still Kim. There's no Spanish version for Kim because we're in Spain. Well, we're not in Spain, but we're going to be reading about a place in Spain, Park Güell, in the beautiful city of Barcelona, in the wonderful country of Spain. Now, have you been to Spain? Even though you don't have a Spanish name, have you been to Spain? I have been <gasps> to Spain twice. Oh, I'm I've so jealous. I've been to Madrid. Mm -hmm. I've been to Sevilla. Okay. I've never been to Barcelona, but oh. I would love to go one day. It'll be on your bucket list for it the is. next time you go back. Because if you do go to Barcelona, I think everyone should. Yes. I always read that it's one of those great cities. You definitely also have to visit Park Güell, a place full of wonders. Well, lots of places are full of wonders. But I would also say from what we've learned and what I've seen, one of the most unusual parks in the whole world. It is. It really is a place mm. full of wonders in that there's some crazy things yeah. going on there. Not a normal park. So in 1900, the great architect Antony Gaudí was hired to build a luxury community on top of a tree-covered hill in Barcelona, Spain. Hmm. Already we're learning that this isn't your typical grass and trees, a nice place to have a picnic kind of park because it was originally built as a luxury community or a luxury community. We can pronounce this word in a few ways, but basically luxury can be used as a noun. We often sometimes might use it as an adjective, but we often describe things as a luxury something. A luxury car would be a very normal car, but a very expensive car. It would have wheels, it would have seats, it would get you from one place to another, but a very fancy seat, a very expensive car, the best of the best. 
So you'll be paying a lot for things if they're described as being luxury something. And of course, fashion. When we think of French designers and LV bags or Chanel clothing, this is all luxury stuff. It's just a you know dress or a bag that you put things in, but it's made in the best way with the best materials, maybe made by hand, and it will cost you a lot more money. Than something a little more normal. For example, the luxury car was ranked the best automobile of 2020. Maybe、mm. a, a Bentley or something like that. So there you go. It was a luxury community, a place for rich people to live. But then we learn more about it. The man who hired him, Count Eusebi Guell, wanted Gaudi to create a place where the city's rich people could live, surrounded by beautiful gardens. Well away from the city's polluting factories. Very interesting. So this was a long time ago. Barcelona was a very different type of city. But one of the things they had a problem with then, which they still do now, but maybe it was even worse in the past, was. Pollution, which is the noun form of this word, we're going to look at. Yeah, pollute. A lot of cities back then had a big problem with the factories polluting、mm. the air, the water, burning the ground. coal, all that yeah, smoke. Yeah, it was yeah. awful. So pollute is to make an area dirty with harmful chemicals or trash. So the chemicals from car gas pollutes the air. People throwing trash everywhere pollutes the ground, and sometimes people dump chemicals into water. It pollutes the rivers. For example, the smoke from the factory polluted the air and turned the sky black. That's why people were moving away from Barcelona. Yeah, that is not a healthy or clean place to live. So there you go. It was originally designed for rich people to live in a clean part of the city. But of course, things have changed. We're going to learn much more about Park Güell after this quick break. Hello, 大家好，我是 Hanny。这两天要介绍的呢，是位于西班牙巴塞隆纳的奎尔公园 （Park Güell）。好 ，Kim 老师说他有去过马德里和塞维利亚，但是没有去过巴塞隆纳。相信这个城市应该有在他的人生愿望清单里面。我们这边补充一下几个西班牙城市的名称 ：Barcelona 就是巴塞隆纳 ，Madrid 是马德里 ，Seville 则是塞维利亚。好，那么 Mike 老师在开场的时候有提到这个 bucket list， 字面上看起来像是水桶名单，那其实它是用来表达有生之年一定要完成的事，用来表达人生目标清单。那这样的用语其实是源自于 kick the bucket， kick the bucket， 它表示死亡、过世的意思。好，那么课文一开始提到说，在一九零零年，奎尔伯爵他雇佣了伟大的建筑师高地。然后请高地在巴塞隆那一座这个树木覆盖的山丘上来建造一个豪华社区，让城里面有钱人可以住在那里，然后四周围被美丽的花园环绕，来远离制造污染的工厂。好，这边有两个单字 ，luxury 或是念作 luxury， 这个字它还可以当可数名词来表达奢侈品，也可以当不可数名词来表达奢华奢侈。那么 luxury 这个字也常常摆在名词前面，像我们可以说 luxury car 就是豪华轿车。下一个单词 pollute， pollute 这个动词它是指污染，我们可以用它的现在分词 polluting 来当形容词，形容造成污染的。好，接回到课文中。Park Güell, a place full of wonders. Gaudi quickly got to work, letting his imagination run wild. And filling the space with enchanting landmarks that are like something straight out of a dream or fairy tale. To Guell's disappointment, the project was a commercial failure, and it was abandoned in 1914. But Gaudi's garden remained and was bought by the city government in 1922. Four years later, the garden's life as a public park began. <laughs> So here we had this idea: build a luxury community, get the rich people to live there far away from all the dirt from the factories and the smoke and pollution. So, Anthony Gaudi was the guy hired to do it. And next we read: Gaudi quickly got to work, letting his imagination run wild and filling the space with enchanting landmarks that are like something straight out of a dream. Or fairy tale. I'm sure you guys can see pictures of this 
and you'll probably agree, yes, these are not your typical buildings. This isn't your typical house we're talking about here, the, the things in it, the buildings in it, and the whole area. It did. It looked like a dream, a painting, a fairy tale, something from a science fiction movie. Yeah, that's exactly right. But to Gwell's disappointment, the project was a commercial failure, and it was abandoned in 1914. Oh. Well, that's too bad. Well, I guess someone lost a lot of money, but the whole world gained a great park. But yes, for the people who put their money in, or maybe for the people who did want to live there, it was kind of a disappointment that it didn't work. It was abandoned. Basically, everyone moved away and no one lived there after 1914. Something that's a disappointment, this noun, it basically means you had high hopes, you were hoping for the best, and then it didn't really work out. Maybe it was okay, maybe it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't great, and you really thought it was going to be great. And that feeling of being let down, of having high hopes, and then kind of not having them work out, that is the feeling of disappointment. For example, to Reggie's disappointment, he didn't make the soccer team. He thought he was going to be on the team, maybe even be the captain but he wasn't even picked to, to join the team at all, so he's feeling disappointment right now. So he feels let down, he feels sad, he feels disappointment. Back to the article, but Gaudi's garden remained and was bought by the city government in 1922. So after 1914, people didn't live there, but a few years later, this wonderful park was still there, and the city government bought it in 1922. Four years later, the garden's life as a public park began. Ah, not bad. That is kind of cool. Ah, at least there's something left there for people to enjoy. For sure. It would be a terrible shame to knock it down. It's like a giant work of art. It's good that it's still there. Yeah, and things that are left behind, they remain. Mm -hmm. This is to be left behind at the end of a period of time. So after 1914, the building was still there, but it got turned into a park. That was what remained of it. So remain is to be left behind at the end of a period of time. Whatever is left there at the end of the time is what remains. For example, this year, snow remained on the ground until May. Wow, must be a cold year. Absolutely, In yes. the spring, there's still snow on the ground. May is almost summer. That's right. Ooh. It is kind of unusual for snow to remain that long into the year. Well, a little bit of time remains for us, and a little bit of our article also remains. So let's take a break, and then we'll be back to finish it off. 课文写到说建筑师高地他很快就开始工作了让他的想象力驰骋然后并且在这个空间里面注入了就好像是直接从梦里或是从童话里出来的那些迷人的地标好那这边用到三个重点第一个是 they didn't let him speak. 他们不让他发言。好,第二个重点是 run wild. 它原本是指放肆撒野,不受控制的奔跑。那在这边呢,是用来表达不受限制,自意的发展。常常会跟imagination来搭配。当我们说 let one's imagination run wild, 就是用来表达让想象力驰骋,让想象力自意的发挥。好,举例来说 be creative. Let your imagination run wild. The sky's the limit. 发挥你的创意,让想象力驰骋,没有限制你就尽情发挥吧。好,那第三个重点, straight out of什么什么是表达从什么什么直接出来,那么straight在这边是当副词来表达直接立即。例如, the concept car looks like it's straight out of a sci-fi movie. 那辆概念车啊，看起来就像是直接从科幻片当中出来的。好，那么尽管高地他打造这个童话般的豪华社区，不过让这位奎尔伯爵失望的是，那个住宅计划在商业上是个失败。于是呢，在一九一四年就终止
Park Guell, a place full of wonders. Today, Park Guell is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and one of the most popular and colorful areas in Barcelona. Not only does this park offer wonderful views of the city, but it also provides plenty of opportunities to explore and take photos. Many of the park's surfaces are decorated with colorful tiles and contain religious and political symbols. All right, so let's get back to our article and learn more about Park Güell, especially now that it's a city park in Barcelona. Yeah, in 1922, when the government bought it, it mm. completely changed yep. from housing to park. Cool. So today, Park Güell is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and one of the most popular and colorful areas in Barcelona. Wow. Good transformation. Absolutely. Does definitely sound like one of those must-visit places if you ever get a chance to go. Yes. Not only does the park offer wonderful views of the city, but it also provides plenty of opportunities to explore and take photos. Mm, and with the spectacular architecture and the views of the city down below, you can explore the park and take photos not only of the building, but also of Barcelona, which is going to be all around you. So this is a great opportunity to take wonderful pictures, to post your wonderful pictures on Instagram, and also a great opportunity to make me really jealous when I look at your pictures and go, oh, I wish I was there. An opportunity is a chance to do something. And the other idea that we often think of with opportunity is it's a special chance. It's a rare chance. It's a chance you might have now, but it might go away. You might not get this chance in the future. So an opportunity will come along, but it won't always be there. For example, working for the company is a great opportunity to learn new skills. In other words, go out and get the job because if you try later, someone might take it. That's true. And as we see at the end of our article here, Many of the park's surfaces are decorated with colorful tiles and contain religious and political symbols. So there's mm. something to look at in every corner of this park. Absolutely. It looks like there's, they're decorated with a lot of mosaics, right? Yes. Where you make like a painting using little tiles, using little colored pieces of clay and slate and things like that. Very, very cool. And very I'm sure cool. you could wander around for a couple of days and not see all the cool stuff in Park Well. So there you go. Check out Park Well and also check out tomorrow when we'll have a lot more from this place full of wonders. Until then, take care and adios. Adios, amigos. Is that right? I adios. Think so. <laughs> 高地打造的豪华社区，在数年后，它从住宅变成了公园。那么，如今它是联合国教科文组织指定的世界遗产，也是巴塞隆纳最受欢迎的地区之一。Kim 老师说，这是一个很棒的转变。这时候，老师用到 transformation 这个字 ，T R A N S F O R M A T I O N。transformation 可以用来表达转变、转换或是改变。老师还有用到 housing 这个字 ，h o u s i n g。housing 可以表达住房、住宅，那它是个总称，它是当不可数名词来用。好，那么课文接着写到说，这座公园啊，它不仅提供了城市绝美的景色，还提供了大量让你探访或是拍照的机会。而公园有许多表面，它都装饰着五颜六色的瓷砖，应该就是指说有许多马赛克瓷砖吧。Mike 老师这时候提到 mosaic 这个字 ，m o s a i c mosaic 表示马赛克镶嵌图案。那这通常就是用小石块啊，或者是彩色玻璃碎片去把它拼成的那种镶嵌图案。好，老师还有用到 spectacular 这个字来描述那边的建筑和景色。那这个字是拼作 s p e c t a c u l a r spectacular， 它是用来描述是壮观的、壮丽的或是令人惊叹的。那么单字 opportunity， opportunity 则是表达机会、时机。好，那么最后来看一个重点。Not only, but also， 它是配对连接词，必须连接对等的字词或是子句来表达不知怎么样，而且怎么样。那么在连接子句的时候，我们常常会把 not only 移到句首。
。那因为 not only 它是否定词，我们把否定词摆句首，这时候它所引导的子句要用倒装句，也就是呢，你要把助动词或者是 be 动词移到主词前方，那就会写作 not only 助动词主词加动词，或者是 not only。be 动词加主词。至于后半句，我们用 but also 在连接子句的时候 ，also 可以省略。如果要保留 also， 我们可以把它摆在一般动词之前，或是 be 动词之后，那就会写作 but 主词 also 动词，或者是 but 主词 be 动词 also 点点点。好，来造两个例句。Not only is he a talented actor. But he's also a great singer. 也可以说 ，But he's a great singer. 他不仅是个有天分的演员，也是个很出色、很杰出的歌手。Not only did he eat the whole pizza, but he also ate the rest of the cake. 也可以说 ，But he ate the rest of the cake. 他不只吃了整个披萨，还把剩下的蛋糕都吃光光了。好，那么以上是这个讲解。同学们别走开，马上回来哦。Banqiao Station is a tri-rail station located in Banqiao District in New Taipei City. The station includes platforms for the Taiwan Railways Administration (TRA), Taiwan High Speed Rail (THSR), and Taipei Metro. Passengers can easily transfer from one rail system to another. The building is 25 stories tall above ground and five stories deep below ground. It's now the second tallest station building in Taiwan. The first floor houses the information center as well as the ticket counters. Besides meeting your transportation needs, there are many other things to do. The Global Mall has lots of shopping and food choices and covers B1 to the second floor. Shoppers can find fashion, sports, book, and souvenir stores here. Travelers looking for something to read can check out the self-service library on B1. Time.